It's one of the most popular magic. Almost everybody in Indonesia have definitely heard of this and that is ballet. So Haru. Hello Amors, welcome back to another super interesting video. I have a very special guest today, my lovely friend here, Taro by Haru. She is a fellow tarot reader as well and we live in Indonesia, we also come from here and so for today's topic, we are going to talk about one of the many commonly used and commonly practiced magic in Indonesia but before that just a few disclaimer Haru so this might be a little bit sensitive for some people since this is like a cultural thing in mm -hmm. here in, in Indonesia and all the information that we know for about this matter it could be um, wrong but we do have our own research so mm -hmm. if any Indonesians watching this video, I suggest if you have a correction, please don't flame us since we are still trying to respect the, cult the culture, the religion or the tradition that we are going to speak in this video. Yes, so if there is any information that may be lacking or anything that you can add to it, you can just have a discussion down below in the comments and don't forget to also join the family by clicking subscribe and I will also provide all of our social media links such as her YouTube and Instagram as well down below. Okay, so the very first magic that we want to talk about which is so so popular that I think almost everybody in Indonesia definitely have heard of it and that is ballet. So yeah. how do? So technically if I may explain to you people, ballet is some kind of a love spell but mm -hmm. it could be dangerous depending on who practice it. Since ballet usually use some kind of entity yeah energies or or some other trade rituals. yeah some ritual that trade that contains trading with um spirit sometimes the entity is in a low rank so basically you can still be in danger basically the target usually they uh, didn't love the sender or it's like unrequited love and yeah. we also almost forgot to mention so dukun is a bahasa indonesia term for basically uh, witches okay if you practice any type of witchcraft we kind of have a term that's called dukun here even though it, it has a kind of a bad connotation like a stereotype yeah it's actually gained a bad reputation since uh usually dukun practices black magic most of the time most of the time most yeah. of the time but not all they can still practice white magic. gray or white magic mm -hmm. it depends but mostly uh, where our magic is kind of dangerous guys yeah um, <laughs> but again to palette, palette. Mm -hmm. basically palette is some kind of black magic that um force people to love someone until they lose their own their own mind like yeah. um, mm -hmm. there is nothing that you uh, you can do to stop someone that uh, got pellet got the black magic on them it's like they're obsession. slowly yeah obsession yeah correct like extreme obsession mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. aggression obsession they uh, they usually don't want to eat they usually just think of about the sender and then mm -hmm. they usually scream maybe it, it, oh, yeah. it could happen that's you know? the like, worst one of yeah. the worst cases yeah you literally lose your mind and that is the most dangerous thing about pellet yeah the victim is they hurt people they hurt their family members they 
scratch uh, themselves or s do some crazy self -harm, things. Self-harm. Yeah, yeah. self-harm. They yeah. literally lose control of, of everything. mental health. Yeah, yeah. Everything, everything. Everything. But then again, like what Haru said, is that palette itself also has several level of intensity and mm -hmm. power because it really depends on the practitioner which is the dukun or the witch themselves it depends on how strong the intention of the sender has mm -hmm. towards their victim and also what we also want to mention is that this is really interesting because if you want to do palette towards somebody that you may not know that the other person actually has a strong protection mm -hmm. that magic will be backfire to you yeah yeah and you mm. you'll be the one paying the price the price yes. yeah literally you went crazy that's all done and if i might add something sorry my english is kind of broken but anyway <laughs> um if someone wants to do palette they will have just one simple thing a picture of you or your hair or any dna you have so another thing that we want to mention is also similar to palette but this is a lighter side of it it's like a, a softer type of magic which is called pengasihan so pengasihan is so basically pengasihan is like a subcategory of palette it's not black magic it's a way more softer milder kind of white magic so um it's usually practice for someone who wants to find love that uh, this is not intended uh, intended to hurt people it's intended for the practitioner to find love it's more like love spell just just a white it's, basic love spell yeah it's a very basic one which is kind of just like a manifestation practice yeah like you just want to manifest or you know do a lot of attraction you just want to attract the other person to the into your life and basically it's like that it's not really about using other forces as in using entities Mm -hmm. to work with you it's not really about that and oh actually we all almost forgot to mention about the entities part as well which is like in palette the the difference between pengasihan and palette why palette can be very dangerous it's because a lot of times you would have to work together and almost like a make a pack mm -hmm. and trade something with a certain entity that would help you out and do their magic and one of the most commonly heard entities is Gendruwo, Jin, and Kuntilana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The pengasihan thing, the white magic thing, usually the practitioner will carry some kind of charm so they put the spell in the charm. Oh yeah, it's what uh, a lot of people call jimat. Yeah, yeah, because jimat can be dangerous, jimat can be good because it really depends on the intention of the pract practitioner as well. So the second magic, which is a more intense one, <laughs> and that is called santet. Now this is very very popular in all areas in Indonesia actually. Basically, I can't even say Santet is more popular than Pellet. Yes. In some ways. In some ways, yes, that is true because I can say, I mean, that's going to be a story for another video, but we both can say that we both have seen that ourselves. But then again, let's talk about it. So Santet, the basic definition of Santet is it's basically you are trying to kill people with <laughs> magic. Li liter the literal meaning of santet is that the the intention is purely to kill people or to harm people to, harm people to because... cause danger. Mm. So I have this one interesting story about santet actually, which is is really crazy. It's beyond belief. Like um, I don't force you people to actually believe this story but it happens right in front of my eyes mm -hmm. so uh, I have a childhood friend so someone wants to harm their mom and mm -hmm. this is what is beyond belief because Santa is like sending some physical things mm -hmm. into your body and you cannot go to hospital and then 
uh, you ask the doctor to scan and the doctor find uh, will find nothing literally but um, the mother keeps on having this kind of back pain and then when she calls someone orang pinter in Indonesia but in English it's more like someone that knows magic uh, that knows how to banish yeah. and you a know. spiritual guru yeah. a witch uh, I mean it, it can have many terms because you know it's a bit difficult to translate yeah it's a little bit difficult yeah. there is no literal meaning in English for this kind of person it's just it's just they're just magic yeah basically they're yeah. literal magic yeah magic. and then <laughs> magic kind of like a magic. magician yeah. but Legit. in a supernatural and spiritual way yes but mm-hmm. so they call this guy this orang pinter yes this mm-hmm. orang pinter and then the orang pinter performs a surgery but not in the medical kind of way yeah, it's energetically. more like they just like Grab this, and then there's some this. Um, he pulled out something. Yeah, he pulled out something body. sharp, like and there's nail? blood in it, like oh. a nail. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know uh, when you construct something that kind of big ass nail. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then bling. Oh, that's uh, glass. Sharp uh, glass. Yeah, sharp glass. Yeah, sharp glass and everything, and then. It just happened right in front of the children's eyes And they even took a picture of it and showed it to me And that, mm-hmm. that was like the most crazy 12 seconds of my life <laughs> Yeah, actually Santet has a lot of signs If someone got Santet, mm-hmm. usually in front of their house there will be bugs Oh yeah, a yeah. lot of bugs mm-hmm. Like this one uh, peculiar bugs just randomly like beetle bug uh, sometimes beetle bugs and uh, a lot of flies as well and some maggots or just like weird worms that would just like crawl everywhere I mean yes there are bugs and I mean yes if you have a garden by your house I mean yes there's a lot of bugs out there but but what if you don't have a garden <laughs> yeah what if you don't have a garden or you Let's say you have a garden, but yet you would still find this bug at the most random place that it just doesn't make sense. Like it just doesn't make sense. Why the hell is all. it there? Yeah, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes you can also find a graveyard dirt. Oh, in a yeah, yeah, yeah. in a black plastic plastic yeah, and then bag. Yeah, just throw. How successful a scent that could be? also depends on the protection and how strong the victim is because yeah, I, mean, I mean a lot of times the the victim themselves they actually have other people around them that protects them or mm-hmm. the most basic thing their ancestors so another point that we want to mention there's another magic that is quite popular and that is called pasugihan so haru Technically, pasugihan is not entirely a spell. It's more like a ritual. Mm-hmm. So, uh, someone who wants to get crazily rich, they will come to this some kind of sacred areas in Indonesia, which is which is thick in magic and mysticism, supernatural things. Mm-hmm. Usually, it's in mountains. Like the most famous one is. Mountain Kawi. Mm-hmm. Usually, people go there for pasugihan. So it's like they're making a literal pact with the jinn, the this some kind of entity, strong, strong one, and also very evil, uh, dark entities. And then in return, they will. Get, uh, get a lot of money Money, success, fame The one that practice pasugihan They have to sacrifice something And usually this something is their own family Their oh, own yes. kin uh, It's like a curse basically So if you don't uh, sacrifice them You'll be the one that will suffer The more money or the more success fame whatever but basically the more that you want to attain from this entity 
the more extreme that the entity would ask for that trade so i have heard some people that you know have been asked by the entity to sacrifice their friend or even their co-worker you know somebody that is not blood related but for some people when they want to have extreme success and especially money they would need to sacrifice their own blood related uh, relative and it can be from like their cousin their uncle their auntie and until it's, it's just getting like worse like their parents usually uh, usually they will ask for your child your firstborn that's the oh, most okay. popular common beliefs about pasugihan okay. and actually there is this one funny thing about mm -hmm. pasugihan which is i don't know if this is true mm -hmm. but there is this one one type of pasugihan that is considered safe and which is you don't have to do as extreme as sacrificing your own family or your blood or whatever it is that contains your family includes mm -hmm. your family or relatives mm -hmm. uh, so technically you can just go to somewhere uh, of the supernatural area that, that is usually used for pesugihan mm -hmm. uh, you just need to bring a bull head yeah, this is actually okay, very yeah. interesting, which is I kind of forgot oh, where did I hear this, but I I don't know if this is considered done by just sacrificing a bullhead. How does the money comes in? Well, it can be as yeah, you don't you would not know, but it can be as magical as you wake up in the morning you look at your bank account or that you uh, go outside of your uh, bedroom and you will literally see a pile of money cash cash money literally on the floor mm -hmm. right in front of your bedroom i mean i have heard some of that cases like it's it's like suddenly there's cash there's physical physical cash mm -hmm. that just out of nowhere it just manifested <laughs> There is also this one popular uh, method that you can gain, but also not in a good way, kind of money. Uh, it's called babi ngepet. Oh, yes. Babi ngepet usually happens in kampungs, uh, not in Villages. urban area like this. Yeah, but yeah, mostly in kampungs. We don't know. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, people still practice babi ngepet uh, in, in the city. Jo yeah, in the city. But for your information, babi means pig, but I don't know what ngepet is in ngepet pig. <laughs> yeah, ngepet pig. Ngepet in, pig. I don't know what is ngepet in English. It's our language sometimes can be very confusing. Pardon that, but um, it's a pig. Pig. It's <laughs> a pig. So it's basically human turning into pigs and steal money. Uh, how do you know? How how does a pig steal? money well i don't know maybe they just sniff it i don't i don't know but it's just uh the method is kind of simple so there is this one ritual which actually i don't know the details how but it requires two person for this mm -hmm. practice so um there is this one special candle special maybe it's red maybe it's in I don't know what color is it, but sure. it's, it's really it's really really special. Only so, one candle, right? Yeah, this candle is used to see the time of the person becoming the pig. Oh, it's like an hourglass. Yeah, it's like an hourglass, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. And then you will need a friend or someone that will have to watch the candle not to be blown away so basically that's what we would like to share for today and we will actually be doing more videos about this topic and because you know there are just many 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 kinds of things and many other topics that is impossible to cover into only one video so make sure that you keep update with that and i really hope that this video gives you some information and more awareness at least but then again disclaimer whether you are from indonesia or not just know that this is a very general thing that thing. we know yeah, yeah it's that not intended to offend anyone any culture any tradition or religion mm -hmm. yeah yeah because 
the topic about magic and in each different culture is very complex it's very very deep so it's just impossible to cover everything so again if you have anything that you want to discuss you want to ask or even add just make sure that you comment down below and again this is my lovely friend Tarot by Haru if you are uh, if you do speak in, in Bahasa Indonesia and if you are living here then you definitely want to also check out her YouTube because she does a lot of Bahasa Indonesia uh, astrology and tarot mostly readings zodiacs. <laughs> mostly zodiacs mostly zodiacs but, but yeah. she will be doing more English videos right I'm just going to also leave her uh, Instagram link down below in the description and that is today's video thank you so much for watching and yeah we will see you again see you bye yeah <laughs>